Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab alongside Kevin O'Brien and our very glowy little friend inside this uh, Think System P330, right? Yeah. P330. Okay. Uh, this is the new WD add in card for gaming. It's in their WD Black family and it's called the AN1500. Aside from the glow lights, what stands out immediately about the card? It is a uh, multi NVMe drive product, and it's kind of unique. I'm not sure if I've really seen many others. I mean, there's certain products where uh, it presents as a bunch of NVMe devices or has some proprietary uh, drive associated with it. This guy has a new Marvell NVMe controller that does RAID 0 and possibly RAID 1, depending on how it's used. Not life. in this particular product, yeah. but it could conceivably do that. And we've seen uh, some PCIe add-in cards before. HP actually had one in their Z notebooks with four drives on it, but that's presenting four individual drives. Yeah, they're, it, they're striping at the OS level. This one's kind of special in that it doesn't require any drivers. It works in anything. We actually use it in VMware just fine. Hmm. And um, it just- So if you want more glow for your VMs, this is your ticket? Yeah, I never actually saw it do anything on the glowy side until it got put in this system with the side off because we don't have anything with a window on the side. Yeah, we're a little light on gaming rigs here at Storage View, but we do have plenty of workstations. But some of them, to Kevin's point, when you take the, the side door off, they shut down to preserve themselves, right? Yeah, it took. This was the most cost effective platform that we had that doesn't have any sensors on the door. So it worked. <laughs> so we had to go to a, a low cost. Uh, system to make the glow lights work. And actually, you should see this because I think if we kill the lights, look at that. Now, that's really tells you what the lights are capable of. It's on a random uh, circular rainbow pattern. It's got 13 different patterns, I believe. So that's our, uh, that's our card in the dark. Should we finish this in the dark? We could, but I'm not sure the viewers would enjoy that long term. All right. So let's get the lights back on and we'll go back and give you just a couple quick highlights on what uh, WD is doing here with the AN1500. So of course, this is part of their more broad uh, WD Black portfolio, which includes all sorts of gaming things. They did a study uh, recently with a bunch of participants that highlighted their different platforms they game on, different things that they're into. And, and Xbox One is really low on that percentage. Yeah, I had, why is that so low? Only 6%? I don't know. Maybe they'll be uh, pumped up a little bit when the next gen comes out. So they've gone to um, a number of, of products now in this portfolio. So today they launched a bunch of drives and uh, products here, including a hub. So kind of working left to right across that image the uh, portable SSD, the portable hard drive, the dock hard drive, the WD Black add-in card that we're looking at today, a new SSD, and this uh, the dock. The dock's actually pretty cool, at least in the preview. We don't have that in yet, but uh, has a SSD inside and glow lights too. Yes, glow lights across the board. So in terms of key benefits for the Black add-in card, WD, uh, highlights some of these things that Kevin actually just brought up. The plug and play makes it easy to get going. Yeah. The integrated heat sink, you actually pulled this thing apart, didn't you? Yeah, both uh, sides are metal. It has some thermal bridging between the uh, drives and the outer case. And uh, the heat sink is kind of important when you look at the, a lot of the platforms this goes into might not have uh, a lot of cooling. There are certain platforms that like uh, to go to the ever quiet uh, water cooling in other areas where you lose a lot of chassis airflow. So being able to radiate heat out of that across large surface areas is pretty important. Okay. And compatibility, Gen 4-like performance, which is now all the rage, especially with the uh, Samsung drive out uh, and some support there from AMD. People want to be able to uh, get the most they can out of their platforms. But this gives uh, users an opportunity to get more out of current gen or even older gen systems, right? Because now any you just need a regular PCIe slot to drop this bad boy in and get some great bandwidth. Yeah. Uh, take a look at uh, some of the high level specs here. So it's a by eight card, uh, Gen 3, as we said, and it's uh, using that Marvell chip inside to raid together the two drives. And Kevin, what are the drives inside there, WD? Yeah, they're WD Black SSDs. Okay. And so what they've done basically is taken two of those drives that come in capacities up to two terabytes each. So you can see at the bottom right corner there the, the different capacities the drive is offered in. 
um, highlighting, of course, the RGB lighting program. And they quote um, insane read write speeds at 6,500 and 4,100. It is a gaming device, so it must use insane in the descriptor. It's required. Yes. Um, and otherwise, they've got a little app to manage the uh, the lights. And again, the heat sink's a big deal to them. And this is actually not so unique because in the uh, WD Black, this portable SSD. They've used the same upside down there. They've used the same design ID, metal case, the ridging, the sort of military uh, font with the underscore. Uh, but it carried through to this. It carries through to the dock and all those other products that they're launching, and is actually one of the most cohesive uh, brand uh, ID across the whole portfolio that we've seen, which is kind of nice. I guess with the gaming devices, they put a little more. Um, effort into keeping that cohesive look throughout the, the line. Yeah, and even on their uh, new M.2 SSD, they do have an option where you can get it without a heatsink or uh, with a heatsink, depending on uh, your visual preferences. So heatsinks and lights aside, performance is really what this comes down to. And here we've got a combination of, you're looking at Gen 3 drives here. Yeah, so this... So it's important when you look at uh, Gen 3 versus Gen 4, the biggest advantage you're going to find is uh, increased bandwidth on the read and write uh, sides. And if you don't have a Gen 4 platform, which right now would be a uh, AMD platform, you don't like ven the vendors don't want to be left out uh, for offering you a high performance option. So with that in mind, this thing was able to get just under, uh, in our particular test. Uh, there are others that are uh, more maybe single threaded or a little bit lighter weight they can get higher bandwidth numbers on. In our more uh, rigid test, you could say, we got just under four gigabytes a second in our sequential read test. Um, now, sequential write, it performed pretty well at um, just under 16, uh, 1.6 gigabytes a second, but as you can see, the latency floor is a bit higher than the other drives. So where yep. the other ones came at maybe uh, 100 microseconds, this is around just under 400 microseconds. What do you make of that? Is that just the Marvel controller eating a little more time? Yeah, you have two drives. You have a RAID controller. I mean, there's certain overhead added into it that you wouldn't find in just a native product. Right. Uh, random read again, it leads the pack. This is going to be uh, closer to where you can find a, a Gen 4 product. This is around 650,000 IOPS, uh, 4K random read. And then 4K random write, again, you start seeing more of a uh, latency impact. Uh, and this is an area where the other competing Gen 3 products, if you're looking for just a, a, a strong latency play, there are other offerings that can get higher than um, uh, what this can do. And in some of our application workloads, we actually saw this play out with um, the uh, native Gen 3 products, just single SSDs uh, outperforming it. But it comes down to what you're after. If you're after... Uh, peak bandwidth uh, on read or write, this thing's going to have, it has two drives under the hood and you're going to get higher numbers. Latency though, a single device is going to get better. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see too, because also today in that slew of products, WD did launch a Gen 4 SSD that'll be available in a, uh, a couple of weeks in the normal version and the heatsink version, I think comes out later next yeah. year. So it's conceivable that WD is doing something cool here and that they're developing a platform where as they release new drives, they can put more in there. And and um, I guess maybe two of these on the Gen 4 bus might be too much, but still gives gamers the opportunity to have the latest generation technology. Yeah, and if you have a native Gen 4 platform, they have that uh, base covered. If you don't, they have another option for you. Right, so overall, it's a, it's a neat offering. It's a little niche. If you want four terabytes of capacity in a performance drive, you only have so many options. Yeah, and right now I think one of the main ones is a uh, Gen 4 product as well, so. Right. And it's pretty expensive. Well, that's the thing too, is there's a price premium for those uh, high capacity dense drives. So if you want one drive that's four terabyte or even eight terabyte as we look to the next generations of, of products, you're gonna pay a hefty premium for that. WD by using the smaller capacity, lower cost per terabyte drives, even with the addition of the, the PCIe card and the, the hardware uh, controller there is still relatively uh, price comparable uh, if you're looking at individual drives. And it just came out today, so that'll continue to fall down. Yeah. So it really just depends on what you want out of your system. If you've got a, a current Gen 3 system, this will give you a lot of performance. 
in an easy to manage package rather than going to multiple drives in your system and, and trying to bounce around uh, where you're placing your games and files and whatever else you want to do with this thing. Plus it's got lights. Yes, the other ones don't have lights. Those are, that's very important. Plus it's got lights. So for the gaming rigs, not this, but the one that you might have the acrylic panel or the door on it. Yeah, this one you don't see anything once the door's closed. But if you did, and lights or coolness are important to you, and you've got lights on your fans, and you've got lights on your RAM, and you've got lights everywhere else, you might as well have it on your gaming drive, too. And Perhaps. actually, that'll probably sell just on its own. Hopefully. Hopefully. So we'll see. We'll see what the gamers do with it. For now, though, uh, that's our video review. You can check out the, uh, the whole review on the site. Thanks for tuning in.